What's up, gamers? In this video, I'm going to be showing you some awesome shiny hunting locations for ground type Pokemon. I know a lot of you want some ground type Pokemon. So here's the video so you can get awesome shinies like these. Okay, so for the ground sandwich, we're going to be using two ham, a yellow red and green pepper a prosciutto and any herba mystica of your choice there you go i hope you're happy i didn't use a salty herba mystica recipe completely something different this time and that'll give us sparkling power ground title power ground and encounter power ground all right this is going to be the hunting spot for a group of families of whooper and Claude sire here because you're, you're going to get family spawns you're also going to get a little bit mix of mud spray here but they're not going to be too annoying but yes family spawns are great for whooper because Claude sire is over here so if you're going for a Claude sire this is a great spot and all you have to really do in this area is just rotate around in circles and don't go too fast because you might get a whoop sire that is possibly shiny here and you don't want to miss that the whoop sires are a very very nice color i really like it i actually don't like evolving whoopers when i find whoopers i want to keep them the same way and get a separate Claude sire just because i just like so much how powdain whooper looks what you want to do is just simply rotate around the entire area so you can start to spawn in more families over and over again of the Claude Sire and the Whoopers. The second spot that we're going to be hunting for our Whoopers is going to be in South Province Area 4. So pretty much instead of this side, we're going all the way to the opposite side by these bodies of water over here. And when you're here, you'll be able to see all the Whoopers in the water which is a really nice thing to see so they'll be walking around the little lake areas we've also talked about this in our poison video because whoopers spawn a lot here uh, which is really really nice so if you're hunting in this area just walk around these little bodies of water and this is going to be your second area to hunt down the whoopers in the game they're also going to be walking around on the land areas around the water just keep eyes on them and you're not going to really see clawed sires here just specifically whoopers so uh, keep your whooper eyes open check the lakes around them come back and uh, you should be able to get a nice honey whooper even in this second location wait this is the part of the video where you're going to have to hit that subscribe button if you want to get some shiny luck and for everyone i know who's subscribed well your shiny luck's already up and that's why you're commenting on how many shinies you're getting down below if you want a solo diglet only pathway my big suggestion is come over to this area the inlet grotto is basically where your legendary was at the start of the game and where you entered in and where everything began and in here the only thing you will see is going to be Diglett. Nothing else will spawn in this entire cave. So you walk around, you'll get Diglets, Diglets, Diglets everywhere you go. And basically what you're going to be looking for is a Diglet with a nice blue nose. Pretty much how you're going to be able to identify it. So because of the amount of scarcity in here, it's not, I wouldn't say the most best scenario to be in. But if you want nothing else showing up at all, and you just want to stick to just Diglett showing up, I suggest coming into this cave, just despawning a group out, coming back in, respawning another group out. You could travel anywhere else in this cave and you'll be getting only the Diglett spawning. Another good spot to start hunting some Diglets will be over by the Cortundo area. And basically it's going to be all the farmland areas. This is another one. They'll be spawning around. Of course, there'll be other Pokemon that you'll see, but mostly inside of these farm areas, it'll be just Diglets. And it's a lot easier to run away from them and respawn groups of them out versus just you know being in a cave and getting a few so just ignore the things outside of the farm areas and you can see how the diglets are spawning inside of the farm areas and if i go back to the other one don't go too fast because they're solo spawns they'll be able to show back up over here uh, minus this guy that's always going to spawn in the middle. But yep, there it goes. That's just another method you could do to hunt down Diglets in this area. A great dual hunting spot for both Diglett, Doug Trio, and of course, Silly Cobra is going to be in Zappa Pico. Not really Zappa Pico, but this spot right by the town, the East Province Area 3. You can come in from Zappa Pico. It's pretty much this whole entire area. And this is the top part of the land. So you can see that the Doug Trios are going to just be spawning. The Silly Cobras are going to be your alternate hunt here. So you're going to just be exploring around looking for these specific shinies when you're looking around. And it's pretty easy to just to despawn a group of them out because you just keep moving faster and a group will pop out. Now, if you are a Pokemon Scarlet player, you will get the occasional Larvitar showing up. But if you are a Pokemon Violet player, and I've been mentioning this, Violet players for some reason have better spawns with sandwiches than Scarlet players. Scarlet players just keep getting the interference of these other ones in their hunting spots. And it's very annoying. 
But yes, he'll be hunting your Diglets, your Dug Trios. Scarlet players will just have the bonus of Larvitar. But if you're Violet, you'll only have to deal with Silly Cobras if you're focusing on the Diglet and Dug Trio. But if you're focusing on Silly Cobra, then you're going to have to be dealing with the Diglett and Doug Trio in this area. Hope that does make sense for you guys. And good luck with your Diglett and Doug Trio hunting. Okay, this location is going to be in Zapopico West, and it's going to be for Mudsdale and Muds Bray. Specifically these two, because these are going to spawn in great amounts over here. Look at that. You already got a family spawning over there. You get some up on the hill over here. And you're just going to look for this color shiny here up on screen it's going to be a lot different when compared to the other one so it's a lot more orange in color not really the brown color so this would be the best spot that you would do uh, just constantly go in and out of the town and make sure you're doing a nice 360 look because pokemon can spawn on the hills as well and you don't want to miss a shiny for no reason so this is a very easy method for you to get your mudsdale and your mudspray and if you don't like staying in the town, feel free to just walk the passageway as well. Very simple. You even got some spawns that are running around in the area. So that's also pretty cool. Just have to do that. Explore the area, come back, or just do the town reset. Whatever you want. It's up to you. If you want a nice Don fan and fan fee only route, I suggest you come to Porto Marinada and just travel this entire pathway right up to here. If you go on this path, you're going to notice a lot of Don fans and fan fees just spawning in families. Now, you're going to have some solo spawns of fan fee, but you're also going to be having family spawns of Don fan, which is going to be nice. So look at that. Nice big family spawns over here. And family spawns like i mentioned in most of the videos means you could go at a faster speed but just be aware that if you do go at a fast speed you're going to miss some of the single spawn so if there's a single fan fee just you know walking around you might miss that but sometimes you know it just might be worth getting the family to spawn faster that's how i got actually most of my shinies in the game of course here's what these shinies look like on the screen so it will be pretty easily to identify these dawn fans and fan fees so you can see the family just spawning around and what I like to do is typically just go as fast as I can. And anything that I see in the distance, right, I will pop right by them and slow down if I see a family just so I could check. Oh, is it a shiny? All right. So I look real quick. Not a shiny. Continue my pathway. Sometimes you could zigzag to try to cover more ground to get more spawns. I do suggest zigzagging. It does work a bit better because I'm able to cover more ground. I'm able to get more spawns. It's going to work out pretty well. There's another family and we're just going to run this all the way up until this bridge pretty much. There's another another family you could extend a little bit further this way but i usually just like to turn around on the bridge because i i, I don't know it's just fast but if you want to go the whole pathway down here you can and then after that i just head right back and then i'm going to spawn in the dawn fans and the fan fees again so this is a great way to just isolate and solo hunt these guys as a family because they're going to be almost everywhere you go with the ground sandwich so this is a uh, good solo hunt opportunity so go ahead enjoy hunt this down and i hope you guys can get your dawn fans and fan fees really fun pokemon to use the asado desert is going to be one of the most confusing places to do hunting for ground typing but i'm going to try to make it as easy as possible to sort this out so when you come out of cascarafa located right over here this is simply where you can do what we like to call the town reset and you're going to notice a lot of silly cobras around the area spawning here and dawn fan i mean fan fees fan fees are going to be spawning uh, a quite a bit around them as well fan fees are going to be annoying they're going to be everywhere in the desert but if you also want to hunt fan fees this is great but silly cobra is going to have a very good chance of being a fast reset in this area so you can simply do the town reset and come back now you'll be finding these silly cobras all over the desert but the more west we go the we're going to be bouncing into other different types of pokemon in this area but basically this is the best spot to reset and quickly get your silly cobra because you have the town it's the fastest way to do the reset Reset. So stick to this spot if you want to do that. And you can probably grab a Silly Cobra pretty quick. Now, in Asado Desert, when you start to get a little bit closer to these rock formations, you're going to start to notice certain Pokemon spawning around these rocks. And my favorite rock that I like to see in this game where you start to see Hippowdons and you see Sandals, it's going to be the one I'm heading towards right now. So this is the specific one where I like to see it. It's this one over here. So as we head towards that, you're going to start to see there they are. Those are the Sandals that start to spawn as you head towards them. Now, Sandal's shiny is going to look like this on the screen here, so it's going to be obvious when they're in the group, but you want to pay attention in the sunlight. You're also going to notice as we're heading towards this area, you're going to see our Hippopotas. I have such a hard time saying that. They're going to start spawning around this area as well. And a good rotation that I like to keep so I don't really pay attention to other Pokemon is really circling around this 
rock area. This is where I'll start to see my sand dials. I'll also get my group around it. I'll see my hippo. There we go. There's a whole entire group around these guys. So I think it's almost like a nice dual hunt in this area, specifically this rock. And if you go a little, you can extend further from the rock a bit and you'll see the other Pokemon, but it's mostly around this rock formation that you're going to be finding these Pokemon. So when you're hunting sand dials and you're ha hunting Hippopotas and families of Hippowdon, this is going to be the rock. And you want to do a nice rotation around here pretty much. And if for some reason you do bump into shiny Dawn fans or fan fees or the occasional annoying silly Cobras that will show up, then it's a, it's still a plus, right? You'll get a shiny. But otherwise, you're getting a good access to the sand dials and Hippopotas. So use this rock basically as your circle area. And you can see there's an entire family just looking at us. So this is the best I can suggest to you if you want to hunt the Powdon and Sandile. Of course, Sandile, don't forget, you can use a Dark Sandwich and get a couple more and not have to deal with certain Pokemon. So you can refer to the Dark video we have for that Pokemon. But otherwise, use this rock and you should be able to snag some Shinies with this Sandwich. We did cover this in our Ghost video, but since we also have a dual typing on this Pokemon and it does show up quite a bit, this is going to be our Sandy Gas that will evolve into Palosand. And the best location I like coming to is right over here at the South Province Area 5. And it's going to be pretty simple just to spawn a bunch of these in and spawn them out is walk right by them on the beach and until you see your, your black pile of sand, that's pretty much it. I mean, it's going to be like a volcanic ash color. It's going to have a yellow shovel in its head instead of the typical red shovel. And I got mine in the ghost video pretty early on, so that was pretty cool. And what I like to do is just walk across this entire beach, tap the end, and then come back. If you go too fast, you're going to miss out on some of the spawns, so make sure you're not going too fast because they are all solo spawns, and none of these guys are family spawns. Once you do reach the end of the beach, and if you want to start the new spawns again, you can despawn out even these ones by just jumping in the water real quick, and then turn around and head right back like that after they're all despawned, and then continue your trail again. And you'll eventually end up with your nice shiny sandy gas that you can evolve into a really cool looking palo sand. If you want to hunt down some new mills and camera ups, this is going to be the spot. So from the North Province Area 2, what you want to do is just come over to this location right over there. So let me just zoom out one more time so you guys can see. I'm going to be over here. So it's a little bit from the Fury Falls, south of Fury Falls, right above where this green area starts. So we're just going to be running around this entire area. And you can see that the only Pokemon that I'm getting to spawn right here is my Camerupt and Numos. And the Shinies are going to be pretty easy for these guys. Camerupt is going to have a very nice black shiny, and Numos are going to have a little bit blue on top of them instead of the casual green. And you can see, because they are family spawns, you can run as fast as you want. You can reach the end of a line if you choose. You can turn around and then just go for the entire respawn of the families again it's just that simple and just make sure you're zoomed out you're keeping your eyes open making sure that you're not missing these shinies of course because if you go too fast sometimes it's very easy to miss if you need uh if you want to see how easy it is to miss you should probably go through my other videos because you'll find timestamps in the comments of people saying hey philly you missed this shiny at 17 minutes and 33 seconds. And listen, I actually have. I've missed shinies in videos. So keep your eyes posted even when you're watching my videos. But yeah, as you can see, this area is just a simple, easy spot just to run around quickly, fast. You're not really slowing down and you'll just get numos and camera ups. So good luck over here in the overworld hunting your numos and camera ups. And I'm sure you guys will have no problem getting these and adding them to your team. Camera up again is one of the coolest, sickest shinies, I think, in my opinion, with that nice black color shiny. Ah, oh, so nice. If you want a nice and easy hunt for your Toad's Cruel family and your Toad's Cruel family, this is the location. And all you're going to be looking for in this area are groups of families for these. If there are the pre-evolution, they're going to be a pure white color. And if they're the evolution color, look for pink bright boots. That's what you're going to be looking for when you come here. And because you pop a ground sandwich, it is going to primarily take over the entire area. In fact, this is going to be the hot spot that you want to go to when hunting this Pokemon because the family groups that spawn, the pre-evolutions are going to be by the trees, so keep that in mind. But basically, you can zoom past a, a, a family if you want to quickly see and get a shiny instead of waiting for the little ones. So uh, that's what I usually did. That's how I got my shiny. I just, I found a pathway that had a good amount of the family spawns, and then I just zoomed in back and forth again and again until I got them. So, for example, they were behind me, and what I would do is simply just run back in that direction, make sure to look, okay, is this a shiny is this not a shiny right and then go pretty quick but i know there's going to be a lot of people who don't want to do that because they might miss the single spawns that show up so it's really up to you on how you want to do it you want to go quick and fast 
school for families. If you want to go slow, you won't miss any of the tree ones. So there you go. There's your options for Toad School and Toad Scroll. It's going to be a lot of fun. This is a really good looking shiny Pokemon. This spot is going to be for Pokemon Scarlet players. If you're using this specific sandwich, this is going to be an area where you're going to be able to hunt the pseudo legendary Larvitar. Now, all you have to do is come over to this watchtower here, specifically at East Province Area 3 watchtower. And once you go there, you're going to start to just go north head straight north and you're gonna locate that cave right there and what you're gonna do basically is use this as a very cracked out relaxing kind of spot to hunt your larvitars so let's walk inside walk straight there and we turn around uh it was a little chaotic because it's ground sandwich so there are dug trios but this wall when you're facing this side and you see this wall you're gonna have a bunch of larvitars just non-stop coming out the wall now this is a more of a little afk method you can do you can have your pokemon basically go out here and just farm them all while you're waiting so you want just send your pokemon out farm them and just you just chill while they keep jumping out the wall and spawning. This is a method you could do, or you could simply just do a picnic reset at the right spot when you're inside of this. That's what you could do. Our normal spot that we would go for Larvitar with our rock sandwich isn't going to work in this. You can't really solo hunt it too well because of Mudsbray spawning in that area. So this is why we're going to go to this fancy schmancy uh, cave spawn that is going to spawn out a bunch of them. So you can just have your Pokemon head out there, start nuking a bunch of them. And if you want to do a picnic reset, you just got to find the right spot an angle to do it and when you're in that little spot you'll start to have them hop out the wall just like that that's pretty much what's going down right now and until you get your shiny pop out uh, you can just chill so good luck hunting your larvitar i just got to the alfernada cavern to talk about this hunt <laughs> And uh, right in front of us already was a shiny gibble. There he is, right over here. I'm going to go get a shiny gibble right now. And I'm not going to evolve it into Garchomp, just because. <laughs> it looks so good. Garchomp, why can't you be this color? Please. Okay, so the Alphernada Cavern, which is basically the cave system that lies under Alphernada, is going to have a couple of ground Pokemon. If you're wanting to hunt, of course, you can, your Doug Trio shows up here again. But if you're going specifically for a Garchomp or Gabite, this would be the spot you're going to use your ground power on. If you're a Pokemon Scarlet player, you're going to get a bunch of Pupitars or Pupitars uh, over here. They're all going to show up for Scarlet players. If you're Violet players, you just have to deal with Doug Trios and Gabites and Gibbles. But... Or specifically your dragon type Pokemon, I suggest you just turn on the dragon sandwich, which would be a lot better. The only drawback on the dragon sandwich is for Violet players, where you'll be getting Bagon and Gibbles showing up together. But that shouldn't be too bad because it's a uh, it's not too bad of a hunt, actually. When it comes to the ground sandwiches, it's gonna be a little bit uh, of chaos for Scarlet players because you're not only dealing with Gibbles and Gabites, but you gotta deal with these guys. But it shouldn't be too bad if you are able to despawn and respawn them out of the area and you should be able to get your Pokemon very soon. Remember, if it's a dual typing, you'll always want to check out another dual typing sandwich just to see if you can get better spawns because by eliminating all the ground here, we don't have to deal with these other spawns, especially Scarlet players. Scarlet players are just going to have to deal with Gabite and Gibbles, which is a very good hunt. And like I mentioned, Violet players just got to deal with two dragons. So there you go. That's pretty much the Gibble Gabite spot, um, but just use another sandwich. But if you want to do a complete multi hunt here or double hunt, depending on your game, this is the spot. For Gastrodon, I pretty much went over to Porto Marinanda and from there jumped to this beach by West Province Area 2 and went further across to this small beach here. And what I did while I was in this area was I spawned in a bunch of Pokemon and then I ran as far as I could and then came back and I'd sometimes come back to a Gastrodon family with some Shellos which was somewhat of a progress, but it wasn't really good in terms of getting non-stop Gastrodons. For some reason, the ground sandwich wasn't able to really get this Pokemon to show up. So the best way that I could try to get Gastrodons to show up was just by despawning and respawning them out. Now, if you want better progress with being able to get a Gastrodon to show up, what you want to do is open up your Pokedex location while your sandwich is active, and you're going to hit your home button, hit your settings, then go to your system and then go to date and time and do a one day date skip at that point on your map you'll see all the spawns change and you'll be able to most likely get a gastrodon spawn to happen now how spawns usually work is you open up your pokedex and you make sure that you are in the exact same spot as their home environment that's going to guarantee that in that area you will get the pokemon to spawn along with the sandwich boosted that'll help you and if you don't like date skipping i always say this wait for a 
11 59 at night pop a sandwich and then see what happens as the time rolls over into midnight so for those people who don't like date skipping you can do that and that'll be the way to get around this low spawns of gastrodon now for whiz cash one of the places i went to was north province area one watchtower and i had a lot more fun and more success with this area because it was a lot better since you can run around the entire body of water here and you'll be able to spawn in families now not only do you get whiz cash over here but you get bar boaches surrounding them so you get families because they're family spawns you can keep running around this lake non-stop over and over again seeing the family spawn now you're going to be getting some clawed sires and whoop sires spawning in but that's okay if you want to do the hunt this is what you have to do and just run around over and over and you'll see your family spawn here and there just be careful they do dive underneath but for shinies you don't really have to worry about those they'll, they'll probably come right back to the surface that has happened with most shiny pokemon they don't really 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 disappear on you so look out for the shiny here while you do that and if you don't like the fact that this is not too much in spawns remember like i mentioned for the gastrodon you could always do a date skip or the 11:59 sandwich trick into 12 o'clock to get your new mass outbreak so keep that in mind for these two hunts now this is an area located in south province area four that i noticed we get a few bit of bar boaches as you can see right over here there's one two three four currently on my screen and this is the biggest little water body in the area and they do tend to spawn in these they usually go really deep underground the only problem is when you try to despawn these out, you'll see over here that if I pull back and they start to despawn out and I eventually come back, you might end up getting more whoopers spawning. Sometimes you get lucky, you get a few bar boaches. This is actually a good time. I'm getting some, but it's not going to be such a pure hunt. So just keep that in mind when you're in this area. This is basically the best one, in my opinion, to walk towards to because less whoopers, you get more bar boaches and they seem to take some time to spawn in. So I just despawn out a group and then I just take a, a just a dive in here and then see what happens see what i get if you're not satisfied with what's showing up you can just send out your pokemon your water pokemon specifically or a flying pokemon do a very good job at cleaning out some spawns you could send them out just to attack some whoopers and clean out spawns so that is a way to hunt down bar boaches it's not the cleanest but it is a way that doesn't require mass outbreaks all right so i just want to mention three paradox pokemon great tusk sandy shocks and iron treads for great tusk you want to use the fighting sandwich so that way you don't have gibbles gabites or dug trio showing up when you're doing that for iron treads you want to use the steel sandwich because it's also going to avoid using the ground one and having the diglets dug trios and gabites showing up during that time in that area for sandy shocks you want to stick with the electric sandwich because if you do happen to use the ground sandwich you're going to get other pokemon like don fan and fan fee family showing up around you when you are hunting it down so that will be better to use those sandwiches which you can check out in the other videos if you enjoyed this video make sure you also check out this one there's some shiny pokemon locations you don't want to miss